Welcome into America's Retirement Headquarters, home of the Retirement Guys Formula and America's Medicare Associates. Securities offered through Peak Brokerage Services, LLC. Advisory services offered through the Retirement Guys Formula. Registered Investment Advisor, America's Retirement Headquarters, America's Medicare Associates, and the Retirement Guys Formula are separate and independent entities from Peak Brokerage Services, LLC. Thank you so much for joining us today here on America's Retirement Headquarters, home of the Retirement Guys Formula and America's Medicare Associates with Nolan Baker. 419-794-3030 is the phone number. Once again, that's 419-794-3030. Online, the website, ARHQ.com. My name is Chris Wan. Today on the show, looks like we're finally going to see interest rate cut in September. So what does that mean for our retirement plan? to talk about how to protect your assets from a healthcare crisis without buying traditional long-term care insurance. And how is your income plan? Do you find that you still need more? We're going to talk about all this and more. But first, let me check in. Nolan, glad to be with you as always. Appreciate you taking time to spend with the uh, listeners and viewers. How are you, sir? Uh, doing great. Yeah, it's uh, awesome. Enjoying summer. I know it uh, is kind of coming closer to time when the kids start to go back to school. Mm-hmm. My son is playing in a a showcase this weekend with the the Toledo Cherokee. So uh, hoping to have an opportunity maybe to continue to play Cherokee in the future. And then uh, uh, the weekend before we had our fundraiser golf outing we did for Anthony Wayne High School hockey. So it was uh, good to catch up with some of the hockey family. I know it won't be too long before we're all back together as my uh, son goes into his senior year and uh, gets ready for another uh, fun time of getting educated. It's something that's coming around the corner, and we, we know that, you know, with the, the start of the new school year, sometimes it means traffic might be a little bit more, more, more cars and on the roads, buses, things like that. It's what's something to prepare for ahead of time. What we're here to talk about here on the show is how to prepare for retirement, the challenges you may find, the obstacles, not necessarily traffic per se, but things that could uh, cause you to delay the planning. Uh, and that's really what we want to talk about. So if you have questions about your retirement as it stands, want to know more, uh, just give a call to that number. Once again, 419 794 3030. Let's open with this. Anytime that I see the phrase, okay, boomer, or hey, boomer, it's usually followed by something snarky written by, you know, someone from a younger generation. However, this headline actually got me. It said, hey, boomer, you're addicted to stocks. The article said that the boomer generation, despite the crash in 2008, it's had a lot of success with stocks in the market. And as they enter into retirement, they're having a hard time divesting themselves of that risk, letting letting go of the risk that they've got, letting go of the market allocations. Uh, they're addicted to that growth. Do, do you find that to be the case, Nolan? And if it is, how do you help wean them off of that? You know, I, I have seen a lot more of equity ownership in people that are close to or in retirement time. And, you know, I guess looking back, it, it makes a lot of sense. If we think about uh, the last extended downturn that we had in the market was 2008. Uh, you know, we did have a couple of years in there that were negative, but they quickly rebounded. And so, you know, equities for the most part, you know, were a, a pretty good spot to be since 2008. And I think a lot of the people that are closer to or in retirement time now, um, you know, maybe have forget about what some of the pain of 2008 can cause. And, you know, if they were younger, they're, you know, still looking forward to, you know, retirement and eight, 10 years down the road, it it could continue to make sense to have uh, a bigger portion of their money into the stock market. And I think even for retirees, it can be uh, a good place to have a portion of your money in the market. It does show that time and time and time again, uh, the stock market offers one of the greatest growth potentials for long-term investors. The problem is, is if you look at it when you transition into retirement time, you know, the retiree uh, who went and moved into retirement in 2007 and having all of their money in the stock market, when 2008 happened and they moved into retirement time, meaning they're no longer putting money into their tax deferred 401k or retirement account, they're pulling money out. And then all of a sudden the market goes down 30, 40, 50 percent. And then that investor is also taking a withdrawal from the account. Mm. Um, It doesn't take long before they're really upside down pretty fast. Um, When we look at risk for retirees, this one in particular is called the sequence of return risk. 
Um, the sequence of return risk talks about uh, how the negative impact of losses in the early years of retirement uh, can be a disaster for a retiree. You know, if you take two savers that are growing money and uh, they experience similar rates of return over a period of time, whether the losses happen early or later, uh, at the end of the day, doesn't really impact a saver as much. Uh, another great example of that is my uh, oldest son, Andrew, who works here, uh, is in the company 401k. And a couple of years ago, when we had a downturn in the market, he took a little bit about uh, his negative emotional experience of looking at a statement uh, and seeing his values go down. And what I explained to him, I said, well, you know, at this point, you're just saving and accumulating. You're buying more shares. So don't worry about it. If anything, increase your contributions because uh, you can accumulate more dollars. And then down the road when you're at retirement time, that'll be uh, substantially uh, much more in the long run is what the goal there is versus, again, that person that just moved into retirement retirement time. So, you know, what are you going to do about it? And how do you figure this out? If you are the type of investor and you're wondering, you know, with the recent volatility that we saw so far here in August with the stock market, and you're saying, you know, before things really get bad, there's a sense of urgency. There's a sense of moment of time that if you feel like you have too much equities in your portfolio, uh, one of the recommendations that we would do is get your retirement team action plan. And when we go through retirement team action plan, we're going to look at taxes, estate planning, asset protection, and money management. And when we're looking at the money management section of the plan for you, one of the things that we're going to do is we're going to do an independent portfolio analysis. So within that independent portfolio analysis, we can take how your investments holdings are today. And the first thing that we can do is we can give you what the range of returns will be roughly 95% of the time in normal market conditions. And or then we can stress test the portfolio and say, you know, what could be the maximum level of risk if the market experienced like another 2008 or we had a, a sustained downturn in a portfolio. And before something dramatic and bad happens, it allows you to take an opportunity to look at, you know, is the portfolio set up to achieve the outcomes that you want? I remember last week we had met with a, a recent uh, lady that was getting ready to retire and she had uh, all of her money in a, a target date fund. And so a target date fund looks generally at the date of when you expect to start to retire and need the money. And what it'll do is it'll move money from equities to fixed income, AKA bonds. It's been becoming a very popular topic for the last, you know, 10 or 15 years. And, you know, there's probably 200 different companies to pick from that offer those target date type funds that are out there. The, the challenge is though, is if both the stock and bond market have a big sell off, like what we experienced uh, here recently when the interest rates went up and the market went down, uh, that can really have a negative result on, again, her success as she moves into retirement time. Instead, taking a look at kind of rebuilding out that portfolio, and the, the way that we recommend building out that portfolio is what we call the independent income system. The independent income system is our belief and methodology on how you should position and put together your portfolios to address the issues of things like reliable income, you know, where you should get a pay raise, where you should put stocks in the portfolio, how you should have emergency and backup plan, you know, how to put a shield over top of your assets to protect them from long-term care, and then what steps you should take to efficiently plan your estate. So if you Google the independent income system, you can get that information. But more importantly than that, there's a sense of urgency. Look at the market, what's happening right now. Now, more than ever, I would encourage you to make sure that you get that independent portfolio analysis. If you have more than $250,000, this could be crucial to the success of your retirement plan and knowing what things look like and knowing how to optimize that overall portfolio. All you got to do is give the office a call, ask for that independent portfolio analysis. We'll put that together as far as part of our retirement team action plan uh, and get you prepared to you know, face the upcoming elections and move more confidently as you get closer to or in retirement time.
multiple things can be true at once. You certainly, no one out there really wants to to kill the goose that's laying the golden egg that has been this this really robust market uh, as of the past couple of years. At the same time, they don't want to lose it all in a market downturn. And with volatility being in the picture as of late, uh, that seems more more prevalent. You can have the right blend there, not saying all one way or the other, but really depends on your personal uh, risk tolerance. And that is where that retirement team action plan comes into play. So if you want to take advantage of this offer, the the experience, the 50, 75 plus years of experience that America's Retirement Headquarters has, let them uh, put that to work for you. Just give a call right now, 419-794-3030 for your retirement team action plan, 419-794-3030, or go to ARHQ.com. Recently, we've seen three different surveys on retirement. Some of the findings include more than one in four retirees say that they've been forced to live more frugally than they thought they would. Over one in three wish they had been, uh, had eliminated more debt before they retired. And three quarters, 75%, plan to have some kind of work in retirement. Less than half of them actually follow through to that, though. These results point to people needing more money for retirement than they had predicted. Nolan, how does creating a written retirement income plan help head off these problems? Well, you know, creating a written retirement income plan, I believe, is one of the crucial things that people need to do to be able to be confident in retirement time. In fact, you know, we've spent so much time developing this that we've put together our process. It's called the independent income system. And again, if you go on YouTube, just type in independent income system. Uh, You'll be able to watch a video that talks a little bit about how we put this together. But you know, when we're looking at it and you're thinking about some of the things to factor in in, in this consideration, you know, again, you know, why are one in four retirees forced to live more frugally or one in three wishing that they had more debt paid off and 75 percent plan to work in retirement? It's because all sources lead back to income. So you've got to focus on income. We run into a lot of people. And a lot of people have maybe uh, developed some type of uh, financial plan in the past. And that maybe ran some calculations that tells them the probability of success. And there's nothing wrong with having a financial plan in place. I think that's a a good part to an overall comprehensive planning approach. But more specifically, you want to have a written retirement income plan. Having a written income plan plan is going to help you take a look at a couple of things. One is look at longevity. When you're looking at longevity, you want to try to identify reliable income sources that can last the rest of your lifetime. Uh, a good example of that could be uh, Social Security. Um, you know, that's a full faith and pledge of the United States government. I understand that Social Security has some issues, but again, America being the greatest country ever, that's considered to be reliable income. If you're blessed enough that you work for a company and you have a pension uh, and that pension is going to provide income for you and or a spouse uh, for the rest of your lifetime, that would be considered, you know, reliable income. Uh, If there is a a gap in what your income needs are, um, your minimum monthly income needs between Social Security and pension, uh, sometimes you can use it like an annuity. Uh, or you could use a bucket of money that's non-market risk related to cover that gap of time that you want to set aside uh, where you're not worried about the lottery of the returns of the stock market. You know, when we look at the, the market volatility, the challenge with having all of your money in the market is the lottery of the returns creates the sequence of return risk, meaning taking those losses in the early years can have a very negative impact on somebody that's close to or in, you know, retirement time. That same doesn't uh, risk doesn't really impact people that are young and saving. Uh, but what it can do is it ultimately can reduce income over time, because if you take those losses, you may need to reduce the withdrawals that you take out. Um, and if you're taking withdrawals out in an equity portfolio in a declining market, you could also be forcing yourself into locking in losses. Uh, Number three is inflation. You know, for the last several years, inflation uh, has been a a real deal for people that are close to or in retirement time, whether it's, you know, the cost of health care. You think about food and groceries. Uh, Retirement, it's supposed to be this exciting point in your life. And and really, I think for a lot of people, it can be, you know, you get to stay up late watching TV. You get to turn the alarm cough off, you know, sleep in. You you think about those fun vacations that you want to take, travel to places when it gets cold here, Um, you know, maybe even just 
spend some time watching the grandchildren, taking them to the local park. It, it also can be scary for people. I think, Chris, you mentioned it. You know, retirement is a point in your life that you don't want to have to be forced to go back and work again. Um, the biggest unknown for retirees is wondering if they're going to have enough income to last the rest of their lifetime. Trying to figure that out can be kind of confusing, but that written retirement income plan, it can break it down into a couple of steps. So the first step is determining what you, those reliable sources are and determining what your expenses are. If you have a gap between your expenses and your reliable income sources, then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to maybe consider moving some money to build in enough reliable income. So your minimum monthly income needs should be covered by all reliable sources. Mm -hmm. Your risky assets really should be used for some of the fun stuff in, in life. You know, if a retiree is looking for ways to lower their expenses and reviewing their budgets, uh, look at the big expenses first. Uh, a good example that we had talked about in the open there was uh, one in three retirees wish they had eliminated debt before they retired. And I would say in, you know, 30 years of doing financial advice and helping hundreds of families retire, uh, it is a consistent theme that my clients who are out uh, traveling, enjoying life and doing a lot of fun things that they want to do are typically debt free. You know, if you have a retiree that's paying a thousand dollars a month for a mortgage that maybe only has a $25,000 left on the balance, it may make sense to take part of the investments and just, you know, pay off that mortgage to free up that thousand dollar a month payment. Um, the same would be true as if somebody had several high interest credit cards. You know, sometimes it's just best to eliminate that debt uh, and, and, you know, help eliminate that monthly expense. There again is why we take that comprehensive approach, though, because withdrawals can impact your Medicare premiums, it can impact your health insurance costs, it impacts your taxes. So, you know, one decision that you make uh, impacts the next. The second is making sure that you have a bucket of money that's designed to give you a pay raise in the future. You know, the cost of living is going to go up. Um, it could be in 10 years from now where Social Security actually does do some things to reduce the payments um, like they say they're going to do. So having a bucket of money that's going to be a, a bucket that designed to give you a future pay raise uh, would also be another good part of that. The final part in that written, written retirement income plan is looking at the surviving spouse and looking at the the impact of what happens when one of the spouses passes away. You know, there could be a, a shortfall in income needs if uh, maybe the pension's gonna go away, half or all of it. Uh, there could be a, one of the losses of social security income. You know, so the solution in covering those survivor benefits uh, could be like life insurance. Uh, it could be, you know, making sure that you're making the correct decisions with when to select social security or what pension option uh, is the best for your individual situation. You know, so if you don't have a written retirement income plan, that's something that we can do. It's part of our retirement team action plan. That retirement team action plan, we can go through that. Um, you may already have a financial plan. Uh, maybe you're not confident in your financial plan. Maybe you're wondering, is there a way to get 20% more income and take a look at uh, getting some advice and guidance on what you're doing? Uh, that's exactly what we can do. If you have more than $250,000 of investable assets and you don't have a written retirement income plan, our office would love to sit down and have a conversation about how we can help you out. All you got to do is just get a hold of our office. We're more than happy to help you out. And that starts with that phone call, 419-794-3030 is how you reach out to the team. Just a reminder, the retirement accounts you have, the 401ks, wherever you've had money saved, that is not a retirement plan. That is obviously a major factor of it. But how do you turn that into income and then, you know, uh, possibly guaranteed sustainable income? It's all part of that retirement team action plan. You can find out more. Get that uh, put together for you complimentary. If you have saved 250000 or more towards your retirement, give a call, 419-794-3030, or visit the website, arhq.com. Now, of course, the market and the risk that lies therein is a major factor and a major concern among retirees and pre-retirees, but it's not the only concern. One of the expenses that could actually derail a retirement plan is the need for long-term care. And to protect themselves, many people turn to long-term care insurance, but Retirement columnist Scott Byrne says it's time for a reality check in that regard. What the insurance industry doesn't tell people, they give 
alarming statistics. By their statistics, we will all be in long-term care interminably. But the real statistics are that, A, not that many people wind up in long-term care, and B, of those who do, few of them, their life expectancy is quite short by that time. And in any case, the long-term care policies, almost none of them cover the first 180 days. So you need at least 180 days of savings before you'd even justify buying a long-term care policy. And of course, those policies, many of them, uh, if not all of them, are in fact use it or lose it. If you don't need the long-term care portion of it, that money you paid, uh, it's money gone. Nolan, is there a better, more affordable option when it comes to coverage for long-term care? You know, there there definitely are some options. You know, what concerns me about Scott's comment is it talks about essentially you don't need it and it's going to be short-term and probably shouldn't be that expensive. But I want you, a, a, a listener, if you're a listener to the show, think about a situation where you, a loved one, a family member or a friend, you know, needed long-term care and, and kind of how devastating it, it was. Because I can think of my own family situation. I can think of, you know, my grandparents and, you know, my grandfather, I call him a, a man's man. You know, he's the guy that grew up, um, lived into his 90s, and he's the type of guy who would, you know, literally take the shirt off his back and give it to somebody else to help people out. That's how that generation really was. And so when grandmother got sick and grandmother had a stroke, my grandfather naturally became, you know, the primary caregiver. It wasn't necessarily that we had to put uh, grandma in a nursing home, but the reality was because grandfather was the primary caregiver, you know, those couple of years where he was a caregiver, I think really aged on him a lot. So what I would tell Scott to do in his situation, talking about the long-term care reality check is, yes, I would agree that traditional long-term care insurance is not my favorite option. Uh, for those of you who have made that decision to purchase it, I commend you. I think only roughly about 3% of people have purchased long-term care insurance. But, you know, in every situation, 100% of the time, it's important for you to know what your options are and to work on developing a plan before a crisis situation happens. So when we're looking at the options, um, you know, option number one is to do nothing. Um, You know, that still actually is a choice. And essentially by doing nothing, what happens is if you end up in a facility and you need long-term care, um, you're just going to end up writing the checks for what those benefits are. Um, You know, here in Ohio, a married couple, they have certain assets that are considered countable or uncountable, um, where a a single individual, you know, typically would need to spend down all of their assets down to virtually nothing, $1,500 before Medicaid would pick in. Um, But even in a situation, if you're out there in a situation and your family's going to need long-term care uh, right away, um, talking with somebody who understands navigating the environment Uh, I think is important. That could be a financial professional that has experience in dealing with this. Uh, It could be an elder care attorney, uh, somebody who deals in long-term care. And getting a guidance, uh, because they don't give you like a Medicaid playbook. You need to have somebody who helps you kind of navigate that environment as well if you're in a crisis mode. For those of you who served in the military, um, if you haven't worked with your veteran service office, I think it's a good idea to become familiar with your veteran service office uh, as a veteran owned business, as somebody who uh, loves and supports our veterans. There could be uh, certain entitlements that either you or your spouse has uh, for your military benefits. Um, Younger folks or, you know, maybe folks that are in their 40s, 50s, and 60s can look at uh, what the insurance company has done is they've come up with with a solution. And what that solution is, is uh, looking at life insurance that includes chronic illness riders. Um, That myself is like one of the policies that I have. Uh, So with my life insurance policy, God forbid, if something happens and I pass away, my wife and family are going to get a check for the life insurance proceeds. But if I need that help because I have a some type of chronic illness or terminal illness, 
I have the ability where I can accelerate those benefits while I'm alive. Uh, annuities, the insurance companies of America have also offered annuities with income riders. Uh, those type of plans are really designed to try to help you maintain control and independence, provide more income uh, to help you maintain that ability to try to stay out of a nursing home um, with the annuity with income riders. Again, designed to give you more income for independence. And then the last option is long-term care insurance. A lot of the companies have gotten away from the traditional long-term care insurance. Uh, those folks who have traditional long-term care insurance, uh, we've seen a lot of uh, people who have gotten uh, premium notice increases. But again, I think the the choices is uh, doing nothing is probably not the best choice. The choice is to become educated uh, about what your options are and then make a decision, uh, make a decision. And the earlier that you make the decision, the more options that you have. The annuities tend to be longer if you can let that money grow for 10 or 15 years uh, for some of the benefits where, you know, life insurance, you need to medically qualify for that. So you want to get it before your health changes. And then once you have it in effect, uh, your benefits become immediate right away. The same with traditional long-term care insurance. You need to qualify for those type of benefits. And again, those of you who served, you need to look at military benefits. Even if your family is in a crisis situation, there's still things that can be done. And if you're in that situation, you need us to make a connection. That's what we're absolutely happy to do and help you out here at America's Retirement Headquarters. As I say, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. You definitely want to prepare for the possibility of needing some form of long-term care assistance. Uh, because it can be uh, very expensive if you go without being able to explore all the different options, see what's going to work best for you. And hopefully it's a situation where you never have to utilize it. But uh, again, better to be prepared. It all starts with that phone call, 419-794-3030. Or go to the website. You can also find uh, out more about upcoming events that they've got, including uh, Medicare workshops and the Economic Summit coming up later uh, this year by going to ARHQ.com. Have you rented a car lately? You may want to take a look at, uh, closer at your bill next time you, know, you do. A friend of mine recently was hit by a bunch of junk fees, including an extension fee where he had to uh, extend the car rental past the grace period of picking up the car, a vehicle recoup fee added to the cost of licensing and registering vehicles, energy recovery fee to offset the rising costs of running an energy-related business, and a vehicle transfer fee if you drop the car off at a different location. The fees really add up. And the same is true when it comes to a retirement portfolio. Uh, it can really eat away at it if you're not looking. If someone brings in their investments, how easy it for, is it uh, for you guys at America's Retirement Headquarters to detect them? And how long does that usually take? It's really one of the things that we accomplish in what is called our retirement team action plan. So the you know great thing is, is I think if you look at the total amount of time that our team does, uh, kind of behind the scenes, it probably adds up to about 10 hours. But when a client or a potential client gives us their financial statements ahead of time, we're able to kind of do the behind the scenes work to kind of put that all together uh, in that retirement team action plan. And we, you know, really try to put it together in an easy way to follow. Because when you look at uh, finding fees in a portfolio, it can be very difficult. Uh, just as you talk about the different examples of, of fees when you're looking at uh, rental cars, uh, another a tip advice on rental cars is whenever you get your rental car, I always think it's a good idea to walk around the rental car and videotape it with your phone. Mm. Um, there's been two different times that I've gone to take a vehicle back and they said the damage was done to the vehicle but because I had it on video and showed that it was already there <laughs> and I was able to get that taken care of. So sneaking up fees is another thing too, but uh, give you an example in the financial world. Uh, we had a lady that had recently come into the office. Her name was, uh, let's call her Sharon. Uh, Sharon had what is called a variable annuity. So a variable annuity uh, is a popular product among some financial salespeople. And what the premise behind a variable annuity is, is it usually provides some type of a feature like an income benefit, meaning that it might provide an income uh payout rate at a set amount for somebody's uh, entire lifetime. And because income is one of the primary concerns and now outliving their income for many retirees, uh, they've become a, a fairly popular uh, vehicle in the industry today. The challenge on where 
I oftentimes don't use variable annuities is when you add up the fees and expenses, uh, it can be extremely expensive. In fact, that's what we found out for Sharon in her situation. So what we did is we looked at the prospectus that she has, and we looked at what is called the mortality expense ratio, M and E cost. We looked at the investments that she's in and added up the sub account cost. And then we looked at the cost of what a rider was. And all of a sudden you end up with, you know, an expense ratio that's three and a half or four percent. And so if you think about it, you know, what is a good rate of return for a retiree? Uh, you know, if a retiree is trying to earn, let's just say an eight percent rate of return, if they're paying four percent in fees, roughly 50 percent of the money is going out uh, every year just in fees and expenses. And so what we did is we took Sharon through our retirement team action plan. We were able to educate her very quickly on what our fees and expenses were. And then what we were able to do is we were able to show her our process. It's called the independent income system. And in the independent income system, we would also agree that having reliable income is uh, an important part of a component. Um, not all variable annuities and not all annuities work the same way. Mm -hmm. And in evaluating things, what happens is most annuities are tied to interest rates. And because interest rates have dramatically gone up, uh, some of the other products like fixed annuities or index annuities, and even uh, the fees and expenses in annuity products have generally come down over the last couple of years in the industry. It's good to have an annuity review. Uh, so if you have an annuity, we can take a look at that figure out what those fees and expenses are. You also might be an investor that says, you know what, I don't have an annuity. I don't want an annuity. I'm not familiar with an annuity. It's still also easy for us to help you find out, you know, what the fees and expenses are in your portfolio. If you're not sure, the first thing you should do is ask. I think there is nothing wrong with asking your financial professional to walk through the various fees and expenses. And I'd say, you know, how does your gut feel about what their reaction is? You should feel that they're very transparent as far as walking you through those fees and expenses. You know, if you're asking somebody over the phone, you get this roundabout answer, or you, you feel like maybe you're not getting the, the full truth, then that may be a sign that it's worthwhile to get a second opinion because we'd be happy to walk you through that. And when you look at them, there's uh, really a, you know eight or so different fees and expenses that could apply to the situation. And not all of them apply to your situation, uh, but it's helpful to know what they are. Number one is management fees. Um, you could have management fees if somebody is managing your portfolio. Uh, these are typically fees that's charged based upon construction of the portfolio and usually quoted in terms of based upon your assets under management. So, you know, they range anywhere from uh, 0.75 to 2%. Uh, number two is you could have subaccount or fund expenses. So if you're in a variable annuity, they're going to be really referred to as subaccount fees. If you're invested into the mutual fund companies of America, then those uh, mutual funds will have uh, fund fees and expenses. Uh, great websites like Morningstar.com can help you find out uh, different fund expense ratios. Uh, the third is you're going to have uh, the potential of trading fees. So trading fees are the cost associated with it to buy and sell different investments. Uh, this is a good area where I have seen uh, this go down. And in some, you know, uh, different companies, trading fees are uh, eliminated even today. Number four is uh, account fees like what's called custodial maintenance or transfer fees. So you might have some type of annual uh, maintenance fee that you pay on the account, or if you're going to take your money and move it, uh, say, from your 401k to an IRA, there could be a, a transfer fee associated with that. Uh, number five is uh, front end loads or back end loads. Um, this commonly is more so referred to when you're talking about the share class of mutual funds. Uh, where you could pay a front end load, AKA commission and or uh, a back end load if you cashed it out within a certain number of years. Uh, number six is a 12B1 fees. Uh, these 12B1 fees can be associated with mutual funds. Uh, number seven is uh, sales charges. Uh, sales charges could be associated with the purchase of different products. And uh, number eight is uh, rider fees and different rider fees that are associated with annuities. So Chris, when you add it up and you're thinking, wow, that's a lot of fees and expenses, the cheapest isn't always the best, but yeah. cost certainly counts. And I think at least what you wanna do is you wanna evaluate the situation and know what you're paying, 
determine which of those fees and expenses are adding value. And for anyone that's not adding value, determine should those fees and expenses be eliminated. And if you don't know what your fees and expenses are, give our office a call in that retirement team action plan. We'll provide you that independent portfolio analysis. We'll go and we'll do all of the homework to help get you that information so you can make the best educated decision about which of those fees and expenses are right for your situation. But you don't know unless you actually know what you're paying. That is where that independent portfolio analysis comes into play, determining the value. Maybe it is just a question of convenience, you know, uh, uh, dropping a car off at a different location, especially if you're traveling cross country. That's worth the fee because you're not taking it back. But you don't know and you can't assess the fa- the value and the convenience of it unless, like I said, you know what you're paying. Uh, take advantage of this independent portfolio analysis as part of that retirement team action plan. Give a call, 419-794-3030 to schedule that or you can go to the website at ARHQ.com. Nolan, let's talk about interest rates. The Fed recently passed again on cutting them, but Bleakly.com's Peter Bookvar says a cut in September would fit nicely into its game plan. They don't want to be caught stuck having to slash rates. They don't want to have to be caught spiking rates, which was their experience over the past four years. They want to be sort of in control of this conversation. But at the back of Powell's mind is, yes, I'm going to give you some rate cuts, but I may not give you the amount that you want because I'm still worried about inflation. Yes, inflation's in the two range. I'm very happy about that. But my concern is that I lose control of this credibility that I've worked so hard to get back. Now, a common theme you guys have at America's Retirement Headquarters is threats and opportunities, and you've helped clients take advantage of these high interest rates when it comes to the savings side. What are you telling them now with possible cuts looming on the horizon? Uh, I would say sense of urgency is the key here. Sense (laughs) of urgency. (laughs) It really is. I mean, you know, interest rates are the highest that we've seen uh, in, in 20 years. It's amazing where some of the interest rates are today. Um, I had a lady that had come in just the other day, Michelle. Michelle had taken a a lump sum pension distribution uh, a couple of years ago when her company disbanded their pension plan. What she did is she moved that money uh, to her local bank and put it in a a self-directed IRA in the the savings account. And when we looked at the rate, I mean, it was the the national average on what she was making on that is just really... uh, terrible because when you look at some of the liquid money market rates that are out there today, there's still, you know, some of these great financial institutions that offer, uh, you know, money market rates in that 5% range. And as interest rates go down, in fact, you know, for, for savers, I think keeping rates high has been fantastic, but there is this sense of urgency that I talk about because, You know, the Federal Reserve, again, is talking about cutting interest rates as early as next month. And what happens is uh, the fixed rate market will respond to that. So it's my expectation that my money market rate will go down as fixed rates go down, even as the perception of fixed rates go down. You know, the financial institutions are already making adjustments to where the rates are. If your money is not going to be needed for a while and you know what time of time frame that is, you know, consider locking in higher rates for longer. There is absolutely a cost of liquidity. Again, even if you have liquid money now, if you're earning, you know, less than 5% on your safe money assets, we should have a conversation while rates are still high before these rate cuts rate cuts go into effect. Uh, We do and deal with everything from, you know, money market accounts. Uh, We deal in FDIC insured bank CDs. Uh, FDIC insured bank CDs, in my opinion, still offer really good rates in that, you know, one to three year time frame. Uh, We also deal in what is called fixed annuities, uh, index annuities. And when you look at fixed and index annuities, you know, some of these rates that I'm seeing right now are, are again, uh, some of the most attractive rates overall uh, within, you know, 20 years. There is another guy that was in our office and, you know, Bill's example, he probably is not going to ever need the money. Um, He might end up taking maybe some interest off of the money in the future. But what he wanted to do is kind of like the old set it and forget it scenario. And, and that's to be able to take this money, lock in this high interest rate and get paid a fixed rate of return for 10 years. And so by going out and looking at the insurance companies of America, 
at finding him what is called a multi-year guarantee, you know, we're able to kind of set it and forget it and put it in place. The second thing that we're doing to prepare for interest rate cuts is in some of our other model portfolios that we have. If you look at like our uh, King's portfolio is bonds become more attractive. In fact, you know, rate cuts could be an opportunity for the bond market. Um, the aggregate bond index up until recently was uh, flat to slightly negative uh, after that terrible performance it had a couple of years ago. And the aggregate bond market is now back to being positive uh, as we move into August of 2024. You know, obviously that market can go up and down, but it, it creates a lot of opportunities. So. I'm sounding the alarm on the sense of urgency. That sense of urgency is twofold. Number one, to consider taking advantage of the high fixed rates. That's what we do. Helping your portfolio get repositioned, you know, with a wild stock market that's out there. If you've got this appetite for equities and have got your portfolio out of balance, now with the volatility that we have in the market can be a good opportunity to get yourself rebalanced in your portfolio. That independent portfolio analysis is what we can do, we can go through and we can look at each of those areas, uh, give you advice and feedback on how to put it together. It's part of, again, that retirement team action plan. That's what we do here at America's Retirement Headquarters. We would be happy to give that to you, help you make sure that your money works. If you have more than $250,000, that retirement team action plan is how we can help you prepare for interest rate cuts coming up. And it all begins by reaching out to the team at America's Retirement Headquarters to start using that retirement team action plan. Uh, go to ARHQ.com. That is the website. Schedule a time or give a call and schedule a time as well. That's 419-794-3030. Can boneless chicken wings actually have bones? Well, according to the Ohio Supreme Court, the answer is yes. It recently dismissed a lawsuit by ruling in a 4-3 to three vote that boneless actually refers to a cooking style rather than the literal meaning of not having bones in it. Listen, I think we all believe that words should mean something, but sometimes they don't. Let's take the word fiduciary. It's supposed to mean acting in a client's best interest. There are some financial advisors out there who claim they are fiduciaries, yet they refuse to entertain some options like annuities that could still benefit their clients. What is the disconnect here? Why would they not offer them, uh, Nolan? There definitely, I think, does seem to be some disconnect that's in the industry today. I mean, you know, if you look at some of the commercials that are out, uh, you'll see commercials that talk about uh, how you should not have any money in annuities. And you'll see other commercials that talk about how you should have most or all of your money in annuities. And, you know, when we think about why do some advisors not offer annuities, I think to me, there's really four basic reasons. And uh, number one is you get what's called fee only advisors. You know, with a fee-only advisor, what they are typically doing is they're charging a fee uh, based upon the assets under management, and they're usually recommending what is referred to as like an asset allocation portfolio of stocks, bonds, and ETFs. So in, in essence, the more money they can get under fee-based assets under management, uh, the more fees and expenses they have the ability to charge. Now, I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with having a part of the portfolio being into fee-based management. In fact, uh, I think stocks, bonds, mutual funds, and equities for part of a portfolio uh, can make a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. You know, you can have some growth part of the portfolio. You know, long-term having some equity exposure in a portfolio to me makes a ton of sense. Um, the question is, is, you know, even with the stock market, uh, something that I would traditionally have to tell people is that past performance doesn't guarantee future results. Uh, on the other case, if you're looking at some of the fixed products that's out there, you can use the word guarantee. You know, if I put somebody in an FDIC insured bank CD, it's the federal government that's guaranteeing a fixed rate of return. If you put somebody in a multi-year fixed annuity, it's the insurance company that's guaranteeing a fixed rate of return. It's not going to be subject to the lottery of the returns of the stock market. And a lot of these products like FDIC insured CDs or annuities, they don't have those management fees and expenses that are associated with it. You know, so from a fee only advisor standpoint, it's just not in their wheelhouse. And my opinion is there's no Swiss army knife of approach, meaning that having all of the money in a managed portfolio is 
was a Swiss Army knife approach. Uh, number two, complexity and transparency. Now, I would agree with this. When you look at the fact that there's hundreds of different annuity products that's out there, there's fixed, there's index, there's variable. Not only are they complex and confusing for consumers, a lot of financial advisors don't do their homework and are not, in my opinion, properly educated about what the complexity and the transparency is. Um, when you have uh, different riders and benefits and how they work and understanding uh, how to keep up with the changes of the contracts, uh, caps and fees and spreads, uh, those complexities and transparencies are oftentimes what makes uh, another reason I think that people shy away. It goes back to the old saying there is that uh, the keep it simple, stupid, the kiss philosophy <laughs> in, in annuities, that makes a lot of sense too. So the more complex the product design is, uh, it, it oftentimes is not in the best interest of uh, the consumer. You know, the more complex it is, the harder it is to understand the uh, reasons why maybe that's not the right product for you. So before you get into any financial product, whether it's a managed portfolio or whether it's an annuity, you know, make sure that you understand the contract language, make sure you understand the ins and outs and where there's complexity, ask questions, be fully educated, uh, who you're working with and or the insurance company that you're working with, you know, should be able to provide you good, complete transparency. That way you can make a good educated decision. And number three is you could just have philosophical beliefs and differences. And a, a good example of that is the term of uh, climbing the mountain versus coming down the mountain. You know, when you're climbing the mountain, you're in, you're in your 20s and 30s and maybe even within your 40s growth oriented investments and putting money into an account that can grow over time uh, would make sense where for younger investors, annuities are, are less attractive than for older investors. And when you transition into retirement time, it's more like coming down the mountain. If you look at things like Mount Everest or the amount of people that get hurt, killed or died on Mount Everest, it's more so the people that are coming down the mountain. You know, retirees cannot afford just the lottery of the returns of the stock market. They need to have more predictability in their portfolio and helping them get off the mountain safely and having things that are non-market risk driven. You know, oftentimes you'll hear advisors say, well, you know, over the past five or 10 years, that investment's earned an 8% rate of return, so you can safely withdraw five or 6%. Well. Past performance, again, doesn't guarantee future results when it comes to equity markets. What if we have a continued downturn like what we've seen so far in August with the markets? You know, how can that negatively impact people? And the fourth reason is, you know, the past interest rate environment with a strong equity market uh, did not probably make annuities an attractive product in uh, many situations. A lot of those annuities are tied to the fixed rate market. Now, what we have seen happen though, is we've seen interest rates go up the fastest they've gone up in 20 years. We have this moment of time before the Federal Reserve starts lowering interest rates where you have this ability to be able to lock in, again, some of the, what I have seen to be some of the best rates in decades uh, in the, the, the portfolio. But I could say an advisor who looked at fixed rates three years ago, it would make sense. You know, why would that be attractive uh, where the interest rate environment was a couple of years ago and how strong the equity market is today? And that's not the case today. So, you know, whether you're, uh, considering uh, getting an annuity, whether you want to get educated about an annuity or whether you have an annuity, um, this is something that, you know, we have decades of experience and know how to navigate that. Uh, we can help you take that comprehensive approach where it's not a one size fits all. It's based upon your individual situation. We can help you take the complexity out of the products, make sure that we help you pick one that's in your best interest. We believe that you should have some safety in your portfolio, help protect you as you're moving into retirement time and make sure that you're taking advantage of the current interest rate environment because it's extremely attractive. Uh, we'd be happy to chat. And it starts with that phone call, 419-794-3030. I know here we are, you know, uh, in the, the dog days of summer, and it's a little too early to start thinking about this. But think about the Thanksgiving dinner table and think about uh, all the different dishes that are there available. And you probably have your favorites. You know, you take a little bit of everything. There may be some dishes that you take a courtesy bite or you just ignore them 
at all, but it's someone else. It works for someone else, so it's there on the table. When it comes to a financial plan, annuities are there on the table. It should be part of the conversation. Not saying it's going to be right for everybody out there. Not saying it needs to be in any, everyone's plan at all, and it certainly doesn't need to be the entirety of the plan, but to find that right blend, that is where that education comes into play. That is what the team at America's Retirement Headquarters does, educating you, informing you, showing you, hey, this could be a part, this could be a valuable part, uh, and then if you decide to go from there, uh, then they proceed with that. But if, if you decide that that's not part of it, no harm, no foul, you know, figuring out other ways to make your retirement plan whole. It's all part of the retirement team action plan. And that all begins with a phone call, 419-794-3030. Once again, 419-794-3030. Or you can always find them online, arhq.com. I want to thank you for joining us here on America's Retirement Headquarters. As we always do, really appreciate you taking time out of your day to spend with us. Hope you have a great a week ahead of you. Uh, Nolan, always appreciate you taking time to spend with us and the listeners as we wrap up here. I want to leave you with the final word. Yeah, you know, absolutely. Probably one of the most important times right now to get your retirement team action plan. We've got the market uncertainty with the volatility that we're seeing right now. The Federal Reserve indicating they're planning on cutting interest rates and the looming election. So let's check this off the list. I know enjoy the summer, but take an hour, invest an hour, get your retirement team action plan. Give us a call at the office, uh, 419-794-3030. If you have $250,000 or more, we'd be happy to put that together for you, uh, help you gain confidence through this uncertain environment that they have right now. And just remember, when you think retirement, think America's Retirement Headquarters. It's home of the Retirement Guys Formula and America's Medicare Associates. America's Retirement Headquarters is located at 1700 Woodlands Drive in Maumee, Ohio. You can reach them by calling 419-794-3030 or online at americasretirementheadquarters.com. Exposure to ideas and financial vehicles discussed should not be considered investment advice or recommendation to buy or sell any financial vehicle. Investments can fluctuate and when redeemed may be worth more or less than when originally invested. Nolan Baker is not affiliated with nor endorsed by the Social Security Administration or any other government agency and does not provide legal or tax advice. Please consult with your attorney, accountant, and or tax advisor for advice concerning your particular circumstance. Annuity guarantees rely solely on the financial strength and claims paying ability of the issuing insurance company. By contacting us, you may be provided with information about insurance and annuity products offered through Nolan Baker, Ohio Insurance License Number 27787.